Hey guys, welcome back. And this week we are back on the Frankenhauler. All right, guys, welcome back. And last week, even though the video was late, uh, you may still have seen that I basically got all of the inside of the top of the Frankenhauler's roof sorted, at least the front edge. I'm very happy with the result of that. And um, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And like always, thank you for the comments and, uh, and liking the video. That all helps out that mysterious algorithm. So, uh, keep up with that, that is great. Few comments, lots of people who like using the MIG and that is completely fine. If you prefer the MIG, use the MIG. If you prefer the TIG, use the TIG. I particularly like the TIG. They're, like I mentioned last week, there are pros and cons to both. So there is um, a lot to be said. I just personally like, uh, as I said, the, the more malleable uh, world that the TIG gives you rather than the brutal world that the MIG gives you ultimately that's the main difference I find. Also some of you may have noticed the uh, the sketch I did of the Frankenhauler so that is roughly what uh, my concept is for the Frankenhauler so I don't want it to just look like a truck at the back I don't want um, our, 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 the ramp truck I don't like that style as many of you know there's going to be a tray that goes off and hopefully pretty much flat on the ground which I've got all designed up in my head but underneath I still want the wheel arches I basically want it to look like a just a, uh, a longer F100 it will be a dually um, the wheels are to be determined but uh, there is, is lots of things that I have planned for this truck and uh, it's all up here so I've just got to get through this chunk and uh, we can start putting it onto the bus and really start getting into the mechanics of how the, t the tray will work and, and other things. There were also a few comments about the roof saying couldn't I just panel beat it out and I could panel beat this out and get this flat. The issue is, is it's totally rusted out basically because it had been dented in, all the water sat in there, there's holes all through it and it's just toast. So um, yeah, there's no easy way to, to fix that besides it needs to be replaced. Um, the edges are not too bad most of the way around except for the little bit as you saw I repaired on the front last time. Uh, it's just the, the, the very top, yeah, being dented in, it would have just sat there and just the water just sat in it and sat in it forever until it eventually rusted through and then that's what rusted the rest of it. So the top of the roof, Needs to be fixed, and we will get onto that later. Um, the Alferrari, I'm still waiting on the steering rack, and uh, it's hard to get motivated to do much more. There's lots, there's a, still a few little bits to do on that, but until I get that steering rack and get it steering properly, I can't uh, move forward with the engineering. I can't move forward with uh, the things I need to do with that, which is brake testing and all the rest of the things for that car. So I'm gonna wait until that gets here, and then we can sort the steering out and move forward. So. Let's get on to the Frankenhauler. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna tackle this week is getting onto the top edge of this rear window. And as you can see, all the way along, there's rust, but just on this top edge strip. So I'm gonna do my usual thing. I'm gonna clean it up with all with the wire wheel inside and out, cut out the rusted sections, and then start placing in my patches. And we'll see how it goes. All right, I cut out my patch. Now I spent a bit of time, I just ground the curve of the window into the bottom edge of this square piece. Because obviously I cut it all on the guillotine so it's nice and straight and even. But this has got a very slight arc to it. And the other thing is it's got a curve coming this way. As you might have seen, I don't have a rubber wheel for my bead roller. So I just wrap tape around the lower die on the bead roller 
to act like a rubber wheel. So I could just sort of push into that. And I've just made this, this nice little, very soft curve just to, just to give a little bit of a break on it so that it, it sits on here and sits quite nicely in the right shape. Cut it out, bolt it in, you know the deal. All right, well that was about a, um, almost a full day of work to actually just repair just this top edge of the screen. It's just very time consuming. Uh, lots of strips. Uh, I found holes where I just have a little tiny hole going through into the cab. Um, generally the, the, the metal all around that hole is very thin. So uh, drilling through it with a step drill, I think is my favorite option so far because I then get a nice neat round hole, I can cut out a little disc and weld the disc in and it seems to do a really good job. Now it's time to start working on the bottom of the cab because the top, besides the roof, is looking good. All right, so we're pretty good on the top of the cab now. I'm pretty happy that uh, the bulk of that is in reasonably good shape. Now we've got the bottom of the cab, which you can see is pretty badly rusted out the whole way around. But that is where there is a solution. Uh, thankfully, at least on these bottom parts, there are replacement panels available. And uh, I uh, reached out to Classic Pickup Suppliers, who are the uh, go-to guys for all of these sort of old uh, pickup trucks in Australia. Um, who have all of these parts ready to roll. And so that's it. So this really ugly corner, I have a replacement panel right there. So I can just replace as I need. And it makes life so much easier than trying to patch all this in, which would take me forever. I am gonna have to patch in the middle here, um, but it's, I've got a, a big chunk of panel ready to go. The good thing is I've got, I've got uh, bits for here, I've got bits for the front. Uh, they've also got all of the, uh, the Bailey channel for the windows and the chrome trims and the door handles and all of those bits if you need any of those stuff. I'll put a link in the description to Classic Pickup Supplies and uh, yeah, check them out as they've got all of the stuff. Uh, and uh, it got here very, very quickly. I've had it sitting here for a, uh, um, a, a couple of weeks now, just uh, waiting for me to get the roof done. Uh, yeah, it comes quicker than I can work, that's for sure. So uh, let's start having a look at this. For starters, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, trim out and work out roughly how much I need to replace. Like, I don't want to replace this entire panel all the way up because I don't need to. Um, I'll probably cut things off about here and we'll just start uh, cutting a bits out and seeing how it looks. Yeah, there is really not much left going on under here. There is a whole lot of rust. Now I do have the inner panel to go in here, but uh, the center section is just sort of uh, a rusted out piece of basically square tube by the look of it. So I'm gonna have a quick think about some bracing to put inside the cab. Um, 
this had pretty much no stru structure left because it was completely rusted out and there's very little structure left anywhere. There's pretty much this little bit through here is about all that's holding this together at the moment. So uh, I think I need to put some cross bracing in the cab for the time being to hold it together so I can cut all of this out and replace all of the mess. So now I've got a cross brace in here. It's just basically to tie the back end of this cab so that it doesn't move around. We know where the floor is supposed to be and uh, yeah, that should hold it in place while I basically butcher the back bottom half of this cab. All right, so that piece along the back floor, I always knew it had rust in behind it and as you can see, it's totally rusted out. So all this piece is a piece that starts, sits flat on the floor on the inside, folds up, comes across the top, and then down, straight down the back. I am going to delete that, and instead of having just a thin folded piece of sheet metal, I went and got myself a piece of uh, two inch box tubing, which is uh, um, a couple of millimeters thick, so much, much stronger than, than what the, is there. And that is basically the, uh, the core of the strength of the back of the cab. There is not a lot of strength in this cab, so that is going to add a lot. That's what the, uh, the cab mounts mount to. That's what everything sort of revolves around is that bar there. So uh, what I need to do is I need to uh, continue cutting off the other cab corner and uh, now I've got it all braced and supported. We've got a replacement for this piece. I'm gonna replace that box piece in the center and uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, just make everything back up again so that it's nice and fresh and clean and new. So I couldn't do a repair the whole width because I just don't have a brake that that's that wide. Um, but it works out pretty well anyway. Making this piece, I've, uh, I've clamped it into place and marked it out and basically replaced that whole back section. And the benefit of doing it like this is that I can get the, the distance correct and use the other part as the template. And, uh, and then I'll run my uh, two inch box section over the top afterwards. But uh, for time being, let's put this first patch in. All right, so I've uh, mostly TIG welded in this piece. I haven't uh, ground anything back yet or anything, but you can see that it's, it's filling in the spot quite nicely. So next I'm going to move on to this end over here and uh, start cutting out all of this garbage and uh, see what we're left with.
right, well, I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got my new floor in the back. Uh, I haven't actually tied this together yet because there's a bit of flexibility to move this whole floor up and down uh, once I actually put in my rail. So this uh, square tubing rail is gonna run along and obviously be trimmed onto the sides to fit into that place. And that's the big structure of the back end. And then of course, originally underneath the back here, these were the old cab mounts. So uh, I had one of these on either side. Um, these are a bit horrible and I'm not gonna make up any more cab mounts until I know exactly how I'm gonna mount it. I do have these sides here with this sort of flimsy bit that I need to have a look at inside this, uh, this is the back of the door jam uh, and try and tidy all this up. So that's next to go. Um, I'll probably replace a lot of this, but I kept it here for the time being just so that I kept my angles correct. I do have these inner panels and this goes up in here, uh, something like this. You can sort of see where this is supposed to sort of fit along the sides there. And that will be the inner part. And then I've got, of course, the outers. So plenty left to do, but I'm quite happy with the, uh, the progress in this video. Um, it might not seem like much, but it's a lot of it is, there's so much time just sort of sitting and thinking and looking at the amount of rust and going, okay, what am I cutting out? What am I keeping? How am I going to move forward and recreate these bits? Do I know how I'm actually going to make each piece? Um, this center at the back that I cut away, I have to try and remake that. Now I've already got a plan. I sat down, I thought about it and I've worked out how I'm going to remake those pieces. But all of this stuff just has to be um, thought about. Sometimes it's just sit back and have a look and uh, come up with, yeah, with a plan of attack. In any case, that is all the time I have this week. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. Soon after Henry Ford built his first car, the Quadricycle, in 1896, he sold it to fund the build of his second car. In 1896, he finished his runabout, which was improved over the Quadricycle in almost every aspect. It was sturdier and more sophisticated and featured a two-cylinder engine, a better carburetor, a more efficient cooling system, and a stronger geared transmission. In 1899, he resigned from the Edison Company, and with the funding of 12 investors, including the lumber baron, William H. Murphy, he founded the Detroit Automobile Company. The company floundered because investors wanted to rush cars to market, whereas Ford wanted to wait until they were perfected to his high standards before putting them into production. The company's first product was a delivery truck, which was completed in January of 1900. Although it was received favorably, it was slow, heavy, unreliable, and difficult to manufacture. The company produced 20 vehicles in total before it folded in 1901. Later in his life, Ford reflected that this period was one that was driven by profit rather than innovation. Another shorter week. I've had, uh, you know, we were away at Luftwasse, which is a uh, the big annual Porsche event in uh, Albury, Wodonga over the weekend, which was fantastic. Caught up with a bunch of you guys. Um, got Harry out on the track again. It was great. Um, had a lot of fun. And uh, the uh, Frankenhaller is coming along quite nicely. I'm very happy with uh, the progress. Like I said, a lot of it is just stopping to think about how, uh, you know, what, how much damage is there? And then how do I actually replicate it? How much do I cut out? How much do I replace? How do I make the bits that I replace? Because obviously not everything's available. Some things are, but it's not worth getting like whole new floor plans for pans for little tiny bits. So uh, just being able to sort of fabricate bits and put it together and, and uh, make it what I want. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I actually really like this uh, part of it. Sort of scratching my head and coming up with ways to actually uh, uh, get this old beaten up truck back on the road and uh, that is what we're striving towards ultimately yeah that's exciting times um like and subscribe and it was great to meet love you guys at um aubrey wadonga that's on the border of new south wales and victoria for those of you who aren't familiar with geography in australia and like subscribe and also if you want to help us out don't forget patreon and see yes. the videos a day early with no ads mm -hmm. sounds good all right mm. <laughs> we'll see you next time see you guys, see you guys.
The Stadia more sophisticated and featured a two-cylinder engine, a better carburetor, a more efficient cooling system, and something to do with the transmission. <laughs> Stronger geared transmission. Stronger geared transmission. Twelve investors, including the timber baron, lumber baron. Mm. Lumber baron. Mm. Yep, so oh my god, I got it right. Yeah, you got it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs>